Hi there, I'm the Rookie Woodworker and today I'm going to show you how I made this board. This board. Where'd it go? I, I already did that episode. That board. Hold that right there. I'm going to show you how I made that board. Now if you follow my channel you know that most of my videos are first time builds for me or first time designs. This is no different. This is the first time I've done this particular design. It's also the first time I've put a juice groove around the board. Unfortunately, that juice groove did not come without some errors. Uh, so whenever I get to that point, I'm gonna have some learning experiences to go over. That way you don't make the same mistakes I did. Um, but overall, I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I'm actually really happy with how easy the process turned out to be. This is a really simple board to make, and I think you'll have fun making it too. So let's get into it. So the wood choice I'm going with for this project is walnut and cherry. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut it to, to length, and then I'm going to take it over to the, the jointer and the thickness planer to go ahead and mill this stuff down. Now if you don't have a jointer or a thickness planer, don't get discouraged from the project. You're just going to have to do things a little bit differently than what I do, starting with you're going to have to buy wood that's already milled down. Me, I tend to buy rough cut stuff for all of my projects. For your joining needs in order to get those nice seamless glue joints in these end grain cutting boards, you can use a good table saw with a nice homemade joining sled. Uh, and then all you need is a good steady pushing hand. All right, now that I got flat boards with straight edges, it's time to take them over to my Barbie Playhouse table saw here and rip them down. All right, so this wood is an inch thick. And what I'm gonna do with it is laminate two pieces at a time together to make a perfect square. So what I'm ripping down here, the size I'm going with is a little bit oversized. So I'm gonna go with about two and an eighth of an inch uh, width that I'm ripping off here. That way whenever I glue them together I have a little bit of wiggle room to go ahead and scrub off a little bit of wood to try to make these things perfectly squared up. I glue these all together in one set of clamps so it's really important to be careful not to end up accidentally gluing like all of them together because what you want is every other piece to glue to every other piece that way uh, you get your perfect squares but you don't end up with like this thing completely glued together the whole way across or else this isn't going to work and this is the point where I come over and I joint these edges to make sure they're perfectly square and then I uh, work the thickness so that our our thickness is perfectly square the whole way around the piece. Again, if you have to, you can manage to pull this off at the table saw and get pretty decent results that way too. I swear, one of these days I'm going to post a build video that gets me off the floor with this thing. It is so hard on the knees to use it like this. Yeah, that's one of my projects coming up.
All right, now we got these things jointed and planed down to be perfectly square. We're ready for the next glue up. And what we want to do is uh, organize them this way. We want uh, parallel, vertical, parallel, vertical, parallel, vertical, parallel, vertical. But you want them to stay in the same direction um, every other one. So I, for me, I'm putting my cherry on top, walnut on the bottom, and then I'm going walnut, cherry. So cherry, walnut, walnut, cherry, cherry, walnut, walnut, cherry, the whole way across there. That way whenever we cut them up and go to uh, glue them up the next time, they'll start making a step like that. Alright, so let's get to it. Alright, so our glue up is dry and uh, right now what we're seeing here is we got a little bit of some spots where there's maybe a little bit of a maybe half a millimeter of of a lip there um to get that perfect is going to be nearly impossible but what you need to do before you go is chopping it up into pieces and then gluing it together you need to have that perfectly flat and ideally we would use a a planer or a drum sander to get this perfectly flat but I have neither that is wide enough to handle a 14 and a half inch board. So I'm going to have to chop it up and then send the individual pieces through um, probably the jointer and the planer and take off the smallest amount possible because if you take too much off you end up having um, having your boards being at different widths and you'll be able to notice it in the finished piece so you want to just barely give it a haircut just enough to get it perfectly flat and then then glue them together yeah that's where we're at but before I get chopping it up I'm gonna use card scraper to uh, go ahead and scrape off all those little glue beads and stuff off of it. sometimes I go a little overboard with this because for some reason, to me, this is a really satisfying process. Uh, yeah, I, I recommend you trying it out. It's uh, one of my favorite things to do. Now, because my glue-ups don't always turn out the perfectly straight edge to these boards, I like to use a cross-cut sled for at least my first cut. And then at some point, I'll switch over to using the table saw fence to uh, get my cuts done. What that does is ensures that I'm getting perfectly square cuts. And now I'll take all my pieces over to the jointer and take off that haircut I was talking about earlier. But be careful not to get too aggressive with this. All we want to do is take off just enough to get a flat uh, board. That way our joints look nice and seamless. Alright, things are getting exciting now. We are ready for our last glue up and we're starting to see what our pattern's going to look like. So yeah, we'll go ahead and glue this thing together and, uh, and wait for it to dry. Now when you clamp these down, sometimes when you tighten up the clamps, you'll get the boards to start slipping against each other a little bit and it's really important at this point to make sure everything is lined up perfect. You want to make sure every line is exactly right because you're going to notice every one of them that's not after you do this board. So this is the spot where you need to get it right. Some people will use salt in their wood glue to get it to stop slipping. Um, yeah, I recommend doing that if, that if that's what you need to do. Then I'll take this thing over to the bandsaw to cut off the knobs. If you don't have a bandsaw, you can use a handsaw to do this, or you can even use the table saw uh, if you have a fence that's, that's wide enough from the blade to do it. You want to make sure that these knobs are getting sawed off on the outside of the blade instead of being between the blade and the the table saw fence because then it can just kick them out everywhere. And here's where I make use of that two-in-one thickness planing and juice groove jig that I made in the last video that I posted. What this jig does is gives me a safer option to plane this board down rather than using my thickness planer. 
because thickness planers can be rough on end grain boards. It can cause them to fly apart and shoot pieces everywhere. Um, and this jig comes in at about $100 whenever you build one. So it's, it's a pretty good option. So yeah, check that build out in the previous video on my YouTube channel. Now here's where we get the opportunity to go over some lessons learned. As you see here, when I start cutting my juice groove, I start going counterclockwise. And what I found with this is that as I'm going counterclockwise, the bit's trying to grab the wood and trying to kick the, uh, the router away from the, the side edges that I'm holding the router up against. And it caused a little bit of a wavy line in my board as I went around. At this point, I realized this is not going well and I need to try something different. So I actually tried to go the opposite direction and things went way smoother from there. Now this is one of the things that I'm mad at myself for not doing the research on because if you do a little bit of research on how to cut juice grooves into cutting boards, you find this out everywhere. And, and I just totally uh, bypassed that information and just went into cutting. Uh, yeah, total rookie mistake and uh, lesson learned there. What I ended up doing to fix that wavy line that it made is uh, I went to a bigger bit and went around it again and basically the, the extra size of the juice groove uh, took out all the waviness that was around that board and it, it helped. Another thing I learned here is that using a good bit and, and keep maintaining speed around the corners would be helpful for uh, sanding because I ended up having to spend a lot of time with a dowel rod wrapped with sandpaper to uh, sand out the burn spots that I left in the corners. And then I finished it off with sanding the rest of the piece down. Yeah, this in here is definitely not one of my favorite things to do, but you have to do it and you have to do it right so what I do is I'll start with with 80 grit and I'll do my pencil lines and I'll sand those pencil lines off then I'll go to 120 put pencil lines everywhere and then I'll sand those pencil lines off and then do the same thing at 240 but it is immediately followed with my favorite part about woodworking and that is the finish watching your piece come to life as you rub oil into it is got to be hands down my favorite part of this but yeah i'll cover this board with a nice thick layer of mineral oil and then i'll let it sit for a day or two whatever whatever i feel like and then uh come back and i'll wipe it down and then i will start using uh some board butter which is a mixture of beeswax and the uh, mineral oil and what that does is the beeswax thickens it up and it'll get into the bigger pores and it'll lock them tight that way there will be no like food juices that get in those bigger pores and it'll be safer for use and I do this because the last thing you want is bacteria building up in the grain of your cutting board and then after that I'm going to use my patented foot measuring device to uh, lay out where I'm going to put my feet on the bottom of this board. But yeah, that's how I built my step pattern cutting board and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I'm also really happy with how the process went. I thought it was smooth, I thought it was easy, and, and things just came together well. So if you like that video, please uh, hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. And check out some of my other videos that I've made in the past. Till next time, make something awesome.